questions. Half the picture is sound. Isn't that what they say? That's right. So making sure your audio is not only recorded correctly and accurately and the best quality, uh, it's also how you treat that audio, the things that you do to it later on. And that's where audio effects come into play. And uh, they're fantastic. They can do some amazing things. But there are some best practices for working with audio to get you the best uh, performance on your system and just to be uh, a little bit wiser in the way that you use them. It's very important to understand that every single time you add a, an audio effect to a clip, uh, that takes computing power and some take more than others. Some of them actually are quite big, like the Isotope multiband compressor is wicked. It's amazing, but it's basically four compressors and a, um, a leveler all running at the same time. If you use adaptive tracks, th this is crazy. Let's say that you've got a 32 channel master and you have an adaptive track and you added the multicam uh, or the multiband compressor to that adaptive track. Guess what? You have 32 of them on that one track, even if you only have audio on one of those tracks. So performance is very important. Also, when your project loads, it has to load every single one of the effects, even if the, the effects are, that uh, sequence isn't loaded. Like you might think, well, it might just, isn't the sequence that's in the front? Nope. Every single sequence with every single clip and every single effect load all at the same time. I'm an audio guy, I know this. I use Cubase, that's my music program that I use for composing. and. Uh, anyone that, that uh, works with audio and plugins, they'll know that there's concepts of freezing, and we don't have that here. We have that in Audition, but in freezing, it basically renders out the audio, and that way it, it, re um, it relieves the computing power. So the best practice is here is how to use audio to gain the best performance. First of all, instead of adding your uh, effect to a clip, Maybe you can add it to a track. This is a very big difference between Final Cut and Premiere Pro. Um, if you come from, from, like I said, I come from Cubase or you come from Pro Tools or Logic, you'll understand that you can put uh, an effect on a track. You know, if, to, in a musical sense, think of a singer. Uh, you don't want to stick reverb on every single time on every single take. You put that reverb on the track and now wherever they sing, they get that nice reverb. Well, we can do the exact same thing here. And if you had 50 clips on one track and you put 50 effects on that, that's a lot of computing power. So if you put it on the track, that's one. So that's one way to look at this. Now let's go look at this. This is a bit of a sound design of just a quick little scene of a guy opening a door and walking by. Let's go have a listen to this. One more time. So you can hear that um, the door opens, there's some footsteps, there's a rustling of his coat, and there's some room noise in the background. Uh, it sounds okay, but there's no life in it. Let's go have a listen to this with a little bit of convolution reverb. One more time. Wow, what a big difference. Now we've got this natural room sound that's going on. And if you're a Final Cut user, let's go look at these clips. You would have put a, a reverb on here. That's one, two, three, four, five, six reverb effects on all of those. And that would, I mean, that's not a lot here, but if we had 50 tracks and hundreds of clips, uh, you're gonna slow the computer down uh, pretty quick. So instead of putting them on a clip, consider putting them on a track. And over here on the left-hand side, this is the audio track mixer. This is not showing by default. The clip mixer is showing by default. So instead, if you go to the window menu and choose audio track mixer, then you can turn this on. And I've actually twirled this area down inside here 
uh, and in here we can get our effects. So if I click inside here, we ship with all of these effects. As I mentioned, the really nice multiband compressor. So if I double click on that in here, this is a multiband compressor from the folks at Isotope and it ships in here uh, as a lot of presets, plus you can set it any way you want. Um, a whole bunch of delays and echoes. Uh, there's also something uh, like a single tube compressor, de uh delays, filters and EQs, including a nice notch filter to help us uh, remove noise, uh, modulation, uh, some noise, the hummer, the clicker, uh, and reverb. And this is where I went and got my convolution reverb. A bunch of special uh, categories in here, um, like distortion, filling left with right if you only have one side and you want it in the both, um, a loudness radar to measure broadcast loudness, swapping channels, a vocal enhancer, time pitch, pitch, pitch shifter. And you can add those, as I said, to a track inside here. And um, in here I could add, you know, as I said, I've got uh, steps on, on uh, A1, I've got the door on A2, the rustling of the coat on um, A3, and then overall room tone uh, down inside here. And the steps, you'll notice that I added little markers inside here, and I just hit the um, M key for, for Mark every single time I, I watched him step forward. And you'll see where he steps, if we solo that here, and then he's uh, off screen later on. Um, and what I could do in here is I could add the convolution reverb. So I go down to reverb, add the convolution reverb, double click on that, and that uh, allows me to uh, add the settings in here or choose the, the settings of the kind of uh, reverb I want. Uh, and that's all fine and good, but now I'm gonna have one, two, three, four tracks with four reverbs on there. Not that bad, but I can be a bit more efficient in here if I, instead of uh, doing that, I actually create a submix. So what the heck is a submix? A submix, as you see over here, this is where all the reverb is happening. I'm sending this out to the submix, which I called Office Amb for Office Ambience. And in here, that's where I add the convolution reverb. You can create a mono mix strictly by clicking inside here. Remember, I twirled this down. If you don't see this, it's because you're on your audio clip mixer and not your audio track mixer. Twirl this down. It's in the lower section in here. If you click inside here, this is where you can create a new mono submix, stereo 5.1 or adaptive. Uh, and I just created a stereo submix in here. And there's my stereo submix. It, lo it looks very much the same. Um, if I hit my uh, tilde key in here and, and we open this up, it looks very much like another uh, track that I've got here. And that track actually does show up down here um, in, this, um, in the timeline. And you can see this is where I, I grabbed convolution reverb. So I happen to choose backstage area. And then I added a little EQ in here where I, um, I tried to take some of the low end and the high end out of there. It was a little bit too uh, dramatic. When, when, these, uh, vis oh, sorry, when these sound effects were recorded, they were recorded with a huge dynamic range. Uh, and I wanted to pull some of the lows and some of the highs off of that. Again, if I needed to do that to each one of the individual tracks, I'd be doing that three or four times. Um, I didn't leave, I didn't put the... Um, the room tone, I left the room tone, which already has its own natural reverb on its own, down at the bottom outside of here. But if, let's go listen to this again. Go choose a different convolution reverb. Uh, let's try something, ooh, Judge's Chamber. I actually like that one a little bit better. Uh, it's more like a judge's chamber, which you would expect to have a woody walls and, and a, uh, a reflective floor. But what's even more important about the, the natural quality of doing this with a submix is that the uh, footsteps and the door and the rustling 
go to one reverb. That means they're actually mixing around and bouncing off each other as if they were in a real natural room. So not only is it more efficient, better performance, and easier to control, it actually sounds more realistic. And I can, if I wanted to, just turn the overall volume down in here. You can see uh, for each one of these in the uh, office ambience, you can set how much you're sending to that office ambience. And then overall here, I've got an overall mix of wet and dry. Wet being 100% effect, dry being no effect. And you can uh, attenuate that and move that back and forth. It's still pretty quick, crisp. I might want to take some of that, that high end off of there too. And I could do that while I'm playing this back. So if I double click on the EQ and play this, All right, I think that sounds good. It gives you a little idea of uh, uh, sound design and how to be efficient with all of your tracks. Uh, by the way, all of these uh, sound effects are for free and you can check them out. There's a link down at the bottom. Uh, these are all made available uh, from Adobe Audition. They have been around for uh, quite a while. Uh, sometimes they're a little bit uh, hard to find, but I've given you a link down there and there are literally thousands of them. They're amazing quality from household sounds to machinery, people, um, uh, ambience, um, and production stuff. It's, there's lots of cool stuff. So uh, download those, get started, start making your sound sound better because it's half of the picture, but be efficient in the way that you're using your audio effects. But I don't have to know what it is.